Oh, thank you. Can you hear me fine? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity to be here. Uh, this is my presentation about the genetic diversity in different populations of alfalfa. I am working as a doctoral researcher with the USDA and the University of Minnesota. So as you know, several of different researchers here have been talking about the importance of alfalfa and the ploidy, and here I have a different plot that show a uh, problem that we have now, and is the yield in alfalfa. In the upper part, you can see that there is a stock of the yield, and in the lower part, the lower, the lower graph, you can see the comparison with maize. There is an increase in yield. So we have that problem. Alfalfa is not increasing the yield, or there are several traits, complex traits that have been stuck during several years. And the way to improve will be improve the genetic diversity in the germplasm that we are working with. So uh, just to have a reference of the diversity of alfalfa, we need to know that alfalfa has been incorporated or has been imported into USA relatively uh, short time ago from different regions, but mainly from nine different germplasm sources since 1850 to 1940, from Europe, Asia, and South America. So uh, this project, this project is uh, is into a big, big project that involves a uh, generate different populations regionally adapted for to improve different traits of alfalfa. But in this part, I am just focusing in identifying the, the genetic changes during the development of these adapted populations. So to follow the presentation, it's important to define who was um, selected or who were yeah, selected the populations. So we need to understand the map that is on, the, on your left, that there are several dots where the regions, where the germplasm were selected to generate the base populations. In total, four base populations were generated one from Siberia, Siberian Mongolia, the purple one. One from Europe, Europe. The red one correspond to Central Asia, and the the green one correspond to the Ottoman Empire. The yes, that correspond to Balkans, Turkey, Black Sea. Caspia and Ottoman correspond to the botanical origins of alfalfa, and those uh, those four points were used to generate four base populations, and the four, four, uh, four base populations were used to generate the cycle one population by five different breeders in five different locations that you can see in the panel B of the figure. The, the, the locations in North America include California, Alberta, Canada, Quebec, Canada, Wisconsin, and New York. So the flow chart of this work correspond, uh, can be summarized as follows. We have 28 different populations with 14, 23 individuals. The 28 population can be split as four check varieties that were used as controls, four base populations, and 20 cycle one population that correspond to four base populations in five different locations. The individuals were genotyping using dark tag sequencing and the dark tag sequencing where we retrieve the data to obtain the allelic markers and multi-allelic markers. We capture, we measure the intrapopulation diversity and interpopulation diversity using genotype. And additionally, we identify if we find population structure using principal component analysis or discriminant analysis. And all this information was used to identify the diversity status of, the, of, the, of those populations. So the first part was to identify or was to convert the, the allelic markers into multi-allelic markers. In that way, we were using one software, the name is polyaplotyper. In the panel A, in the upper part, we have one file that we can obtain from dark tag. The name is AMCC that correspond just to the targeted markers. In total, we will have 3,000 allelic SNPs in the number of individuals, right? In the lowest part, in the lower part of the panel A, 
we have multiple SNPs that are adjacent, yes, are just a uh, few uh, base pairs away from the target SNP. So we can obtain more markers, yes, using the missing allele discovery count. In total, we have 22,000 markers in that way. But uh, we use this information, the MADC file, to convert this multiple marker, multiple SNPs, into multi-allelic markers named aploblocks. The panel B show how we can we can use multiple SNPs, SNP A, B, C, and the, in the locus one to convert into one single multi-allelic marker that is the panel B. With that, we compare what was the difference in the B allelic versus multi-allelic markers. We have the same number of individuals and we have uh, the same number of loci. But the number of alleles are completely different because of course, when we are working with B allelic markers, we only have two options, yes, A or B, and several of them are monomorphic, are monoallelic, yes? If you see here in the, in the bar plot, 271 markers were monoallelic. But when we convert these markers to multiallelic markers, the percentage of multiallelic markers reduced to 0.6% versus 9% of monomorphic markers. That is really good because we are increasing the number of alleles and we are decreasing of monoallelic or yes, monoallelic loci. Additionally, we start to measure the intrapopulation diversity in, uh, in these uh, comparing monomorph, mono, uh, allelic and multi-allelic markers and different parameters as number of alleles, effective number of alleles, observed, expected, and total heterozygosity were higher in upper blocks, in multi-allelic markers. That is good because we are increasing or we are capturing more diversity using another kind of markers. And with that in mind, we use that kind of markers to measure the diversity in the 28 different populations, identifying that, for example, Cassia in California was the less diverse, diverse population, and Siberia in New York was the most diverse population. Actually, this is important because we can identify how was the change in genetic diversity compared with the base populations. In the, again, in the right, in the left uh, box plot, you can see blue dots, yes, that correspond to the base populations, and the blue dots are connected by arrows to different cycle one populations. And we can see that uh, we can group, for example, that Siberia has a highest genetic diversity, and the base population in Siberia, the, the diversity is similar to New York. But if you see, there are blue like Celeste, like pale, pale blue dots that are always in the lowest part of the box plot that correspond to California. Yes. And the right box plot correspond to inbreeding coefficient that previously were talking by Edelman that shows how is important this inbreeding coefficient. Most of the inbreeding coefficient here shows an excess of heterozygotes in these populations. But if you see, California is the most, is the less negative, uh, they are the less negative population in comparison with the other. Additionally, we compare the interpopulation genetic diversity using three parameters. Uh, one is the, the right fixation index, the FST, or there is the raw parameter that is an analog to FST but apply for polyploids. And the last one is analysis of molecular variants. The two first were comparing using bialelic markers and multiallelic markers, and were comparing using FST versus raw. And in the first, in the panel A, you can see the comparison of bialelic versus um, multiallelic markers using FST. And there is a little improve of multiallelic markers because the scale is higher. And when you compare bialelic versus multiallelic markers using raw, the values are higher. And even they are higher for upper blocks. And the, the change is more evident in the panel C, where you can see the scales of raw in upper blocks. Yes, the population structure is up to 0.3. 
using row of Apple blocks versus FST of Apple blocks. So we keep or we continue using row as parameter for fixation index, and we are using Apple blocks to measure this distance. In summary, we can see that there are three different populations that were differently uh, structured in comparison with the other populations. For example, the cultivar, the cultivar, the variety 55894 was the most different. You can see in the in the orange one, and the population Siberia in Alberta and Ottoman in Alberta. And additionally, if you see the base populations were always at the start of the different plots. That means that they are the less structured populations, as you expect. We also compare these results with the analysis of molecular variants, identifying similar results. For example, when we are analyzing all different populations, the all 28, we found uh, variants among population of 14%, 14.8, But when we only analyze the base populations, the variance among population is only C8.6. That is a low variance. But the variance of, among populations is increased in Czechs, for example, because they come from different sources, and in Alberta, in 23.9. That means that Alberta is a, the population in, the, in Alberta is selected and the populations are getting a structure. Finally, our results were comparing, you know, we checked the population structure, the population clustering by principal component analysis and discriminant uh, analysis of principal components. And in the principal component analysis, we see a clear pattern of Siberia, yes, the purple one, Ottoman, uh, and, and Cassia, yes, and Hero in the lower part of the PCA. Additionally, you, we can see that the Czech varieties are inducing the center. And the results are similar with discriminant analysis of principal components. But here, interestingly, we can identify an extra cluster, the cluster number one, that corresponds exclusively to the uh, variety 55 H94 that was separated completely for the rest of the varieties. So to, to final, just to take these conclusions, we implement polyaplotyper in the DARTAC uh, platform to obtain multi-allelic markers from SNPs. That was useful because we, using these um, multi-allelic markers, we can obtain more information using intra and intergenetic diversity metrics. And we can identify, for example, how New York is a good location for our diversity proposed, but other locations, for example, California or Alberta are depleting the genetic diversity because their plants are more stressed. And we found that our PCA and discriminant analysis are agree and show how the population are clustering by genetic pools. And this is useful because we are measuring the genetic shifts in the population that we are generating for improvement of yield or other traits. Thank you to all of you and the different, thank you for, for yes, to the different organizations that were involved or are involved in this uh, project that, that includes the different units of the USDA, the Breeding Site, University of Minnesota, uh, UC Davis, uh, people from Canada, the Agri-Food of Agri-Food Canada and Cornell. Thank you.